In the summer of 2013, Tomsk State University became a meeting place for young and eminent scholars at a summer school devoted to the problems of climate change. For a second time, the International Research and Educational School Natural Environment of Arctic and Alpine Areas, Relief, Soils, Permafrost, Glaciers and Biota as Indicators of Climate Changes, was held in the Arctic Valley at the University Research Station. More than 40 students and researchers from different countries took part in the school, including experts in the fields of archaeology, social anthropology, hydrology, glaciology, botany, zoology and other related spheres, Nobel Prize winner Professor Terry Callaghan among them. A plenary meeting with reports by leading Russian and foreign researchers took place at Tomsk State University on the 4th and 5th of July, and on the 6th of July the bus with school participants left for the Arctur Elpen station. The school participants traveled along the Chusky Road, one of the oldest roads in Russia. A trade path meandering along picturesque valleys and mountains of the Altai was already mentioned in thousand-year-old Chinese chronicles. The building of the modern road began in 1901. Now it is the most popular way for ecotourists, travelers and mountaineers, and it starts in the largest Siberian city, Novosibirsk, and goes through passes and valleys, past mountains and ridges, to the steppe of Mongolia. The Chuisky Road is the place from which tourist and research routes to the so-called Altai Alps, the Severochuisky and Yuzhnochuisky ridges, start. The first stop for Arctur summer school participants was in the botanical garden in Barnaul. Hearty welcome, substantial dinner and cozy tents made everybody feel at home. In the morning, everyone is ready to continue their way. The first ridge of hills appears, and behind it are the real Altai mountains with the main Altai river flowing between them, the blue and green Katun, the beauty and pride of Altai people. On our way in the Gorne Altai to Arctur peaks, we'll go along the river. The Katun has glacial origin. This is the reason why it hasn't only impetuous temper, but also the water, which is as cold as ice even in the midsummer. At the next stop in the campsite Manjerok, near the lake with the same name, summer school participants venture to take Altai christianing to raft on the Katun, which has a very rapid current. The adventure turned out to be unforgettable for everybody, especially for those who had the courage to bathe in the ice-cold water after rafting. The Chuisky Road goes through two mountain passes called Siminsky and Chikitaman. The Siminsky Pass is one of the most popular places among tourists in the Gorn Altai. Newly married couples often come here to take photos. There's a small market with traditional Altai souvenirs, musical instruments, carved figures, decorations made of wood and stone, honey and herb water. In less than 100 kilometers, you can admire wonderful views from the Chikitaman Pass.
The trees with stripes of white fabric tied to their branches catch travelers' eyes. It is an old Altai tradition, the essence of which is sacrifice to the spirit of the place and the plea for goodwill of the spirit that is the past keeper. You can come across such trees and bushes all over Gorn Altai, especially near natural objects held sacred by local people. The researchers in the field of geomorphology and geography found the object that was of great interest to them, the Katun Terraces, unique natural creation. Not once has the question concerning the origin and age of the Katun Terraces been raised in scientific discussions, but still an unambiguous answer has not been given. The most widely spread point of view is that they were formed in the Katun Valley within an extremely short period of time because of the flood from a high mountain lake, which broke through a natural dam built by two glaciers and came down in torrents to the open area. A gigantic wave rushed through the valleys of the rivers Chuya and Katun to form unusual relief. The terraces we can see now are much higher than the water level in the Katun and they are located in the place where there used to be the riverbed of the old stream. A stop was made so that summer school participants could listen to a lecture devoted to the question of Teresa's origin and get acquainted with both ancient relief, local flora and fauna. Here we are on the way again, and our bus stops near the so-called Spit, the place where two main Altai rivers, the Katun and Chue, meet. From this point our way to the glaciers is along the Chue. Here the water in the Chue has a special dim white color, and the stream seems solid and thick. Flowing to the clear blue and green Katun, the Chue doesn't mix with it, and for some time waters of the rivers flow as a two-color stream. In the place the rivers meet, there is a summer house. Here is a natural park Chui Hazi. Travelers can find a tasty square meal in a cozy cafe nearby and get impressions of local Altai home culture. Snow-capped peaks come in sight on the third day of the journey. Soon they come nearer and school participants have to get from a comfortable bus into all-terrain cars. As there is an uphill ride ahead of them. The way from the village of Kurai to the station near the actual glacier in all-terrain cars is overshadowed by a mix of cold rain and snow. The mountains are hidden behind dark clouds. It is hard to believe that over there, behind those gloomy clouds, the travelers are going to discuss the consequences of global warming. The cars overcome steep sections and deep holes on the road to Aktru. At last, the researchers, who feel a bit freezing and tired, are inspired by warm friendly welcome at a high mountain station of Tomsk State University at the foot of Aktro Glacier. The first morning in the summer school comes without any rain. So the participants go for an excursion to the glacier small Aktro.
On the way, they pass by the monuments to the mountaineers and researchers who died here. Mountains are severe. They do not forgive mistakes. The participants have to face a challenge, crossing a river over the bridge made of two logs, with a stream boiling up under their feet and the pigs watching the newcomers. The test completed, the participants are awarded with a prize. Beautiful scenery with a waterfall. It appears due to global glacier thawing. Water washed away the slope and found its way to the surface. Coming down from the glacier, the waterfall and other small springs give birth to large Siberian rivers flowing to northern seas. One more excursion is to the Blue Lake, located at the height of 2,800 meters above sea level. Climbing there is a difficult task, and interchange of steep and flat sections is a real challenge for the participants. Nevertheless, everybody is ready to go and listen to the safety instructions as the second part of the journey is along the edge of the glacier left Aktru, where there are ice cracks and traps under the snow cover. Two years ago, during the first summer school on climate issues, at the same time of the year the lake was free from ice. Now huge block of ice float over its surface. Here we hold and have lunch. Those people who are brave enough bathe in the lake with water temperature about 1 degree above zero. Mountains are hazy, slopes are covered with snow. Experienced travelers who have visited Aktru not once say that it is late spring, though according to the calendar it is midsummer. However, great amount of snow doesn't indicate a positive climate dynamics. as glaciers continue retreating. In the Pasuchitil, 
that the participants visited on the last day of the summer school, there had been a glacier two decades before. But now it doesn't exist. The small Aktru proper, which is a symbol of the valley, has shrunk considerably. From the Uchitl Pass, the school participants enjoyed the panorama of Kraiskaya Steep. With peaks and glasses behind their backs, and the station far away below, with its small cottages and a clear spring providing cool drinking water on rare hot days. The first capital houses were built here more than 50 years ago. Now the station included into the network Interact is developing rapidly to provide new opportunities for research and ecotourism. One day at the station was devoted to research presentations made by young scientists participating in the school. The fields of research are different, from studying soils in world regions to solar radiation in Naktru. After visiting the actor station, the excursion continues in a different place, a dry valley of the Kizilchin River. The scenery changes completely. The participants seem to occur on a different planet. Unusual colors of rocks can be explained by rare earth elements coming out of the surface. There is a no doubt of service gallery nearby, built to extract molybdenum and mercury. In the surroundings of Kizilchin, Tomsk University students, geologists, archaeologists, geographers have their field training every year. Red mountains with flat slopes covered with dust and crushed stone gave the name to a small river. Kizilchin means a red canyon. Water fills the riverbed in the morning, but disappears by the evening and the riverbed becomes dry. After cool glaciers, the hot summer in Kizilchin made the participants feel hot. They lived a camp life, slept in tents, cooked on fire.
However, there was time for learning. Not far from the camp, the participants studied petroglyphs and how to fix them in a proper way. Here we again saw white ribbons symbolizing a sacred place, a spring with the clearest water we drank from. Gorne Altai is there with a lot of opportunities for a researcher and traveler. It arouses growing interest in the world community. Tomsk State University, that was the first to study the area at the beginning of the previous century, is aware of its responsibility for investigating and reserving this unique natural zone. 